Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is uh, a webinar dedicated to uh, the regional cluster uh, Southeast Europe of the project Smart Agri Hubs. Um, I am Michael Kutcheras, I'm from the Agricultural University of Athens, and I act as the regional cluster leader for Southeast Europe. And uh, together with uh, Viorel Marin uh, from Romania, uh, he's a uh, colleague uh, for the Southeast uh, cluster. I will introduce you uh, today to the uh, Southeast Europe uh, cluster, the, the updates, the ins and outs, uh, as we call it, uh, the, the current situation, what we have been doing all this time, uh, our flagship innovation experiments. Uh, we will have some introductions uh, from uh, two very active digital innovation hubs in the region. And um, we will also talk about the open calls, uh, the lessons learned, and what our future plans and strategies will be for the region from now on. Uh, Viorel, uh, you can introduce yourself, please. Yes, thank you, Mike. So, uh, uh, my name is Jorel Marin. Uh, as Mike said, uh, we are co-leading together the um, regional cluster Southeast Europe. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to join you all on uh, our, let's say, virtual tour of today. And uh, I think it's good to mention also, we have Patrick behind the doors that will uh, take care to handle properly uh, the, the seminar and who will wait for every speaker for the next slide, next slide, next slide <laughs> uh, message. Okay, so Mike. Yes, uh, so I will start with a small introduction to the, to the region and then we will proceed introducing uh, you all to the flexible innovation experiments, uh, the initial flexible innovation experiments of the project. So, Patrick, if you can, uh, can we have the next slide? Um, so, uh, strategy culture uh, in our region, what are our ambitions? Uh, we are a region with a lot of countries with uh, a variety of uh, uh, technology ad adoption rates with a high number of uh, companies that create new uh, technologies and that want to promote digital agriculture, uh, but with different states. Um, so one of, of our main uh, goals uh, for smart agriculture in Southeast Europe is to close the, the actual gap that exists uh, between the available technology and the adoption from the farmers. Uh, we have a large number of uh, traditional farmers that, having, uh, that are, uh, have a hard time uh, adopting new technologies. Uh, we want to uh, facilitate the collaboration uh, between uh, farmers, between uh, digital service providers and farms uh, in the frame of uh, the open calls, but also beyond. We want to be able to do uh, effective and efficient matchmaking between stakeholders and uh, of course we uh, we would like to improve the digital agriculture service provision across the, cl the cluster in uh, in our countries uh, by creating digital innovation hub nodes uh, the digital innovation hub nodes are a groups of different digital innovation hubs that together provide full packages of required activities and services, I'm sorry, towards the agri-food sector. And uh, one, um, also one big goal of us is uh, also to identify funding schemes to complement smart agri-hubs and uh, digital innovation hub activities on digital uh, agriculture, uh, which is something that is a great challenge for uh, our region. Next slide, please. So what's the role of Smart Agricubs uh, for our region? Uh, is the leading initiative. Uh, Smart Agricubs is the leading initiative to create uh, a digital innovation hub ecosystem uh, across uh, our countries, fostering the collaboration among a large number of digital innovation hub, uh, hubs across initially nine different uh, countries. Can we have the next slide? 
So during uh, this period, uh, in the frame of smart agri hubs, uh, we conduct network expansion activities. We communicate the project and its activities and our different hub services uh, throughout the cluster and beyond. We examine the possibilities for collaboration and expansion uh, across uh, the regional cluster. Uh, we try to identify complementary funds uh, for smart agri hubs. Uh, we monitor and uh, have uh, an organized demonstration for our initial flagship innovation experiments and we conduct communication dissemination activities for the project and also in synergies with uh, other projects and initiatives that are in the frame and, and have the scope to uh, promote digital agriculture uh, in the region. Next slide. Uh, in, our achievement, in our achievements, we can say that um, from the point of view of uh, state in Romania, we have established a connection with the Romanian Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, we have uh, identified new digital innovation hubs and competence centers uh, in Greece and Turkey. Uh, the expansion uh, is taking place, it's, um, uh, it's great because we have uh, also additional countries expanding uh, beyond the borders, the initial borders of the project, uh, we have uh, digital innovation hubs in Bosnia, uh, even Russia and Georgia. So the activity is uh, high. Uh, we try to complement uh, activities and find connections with uh, um, uh, related projects, uh, also uh, creating digital innovation hub uh, networks like uh, GlobalFood. And uh, we try to foster synergies through the organization of uh, workshops. Next slide. Let's see some numbers from our regions. From our region, we have uh, until now 35 digital innovation hubs, uh, four NGOs, uh, three flags of innovation experiments, which we'll be uh, seeing uh, next. We have 16 uh, competence centers and 30 uh, companies. You can all uh, see in detail which are the digital innovation hubs and all the different kinds of organizations by visiting uh, the innovation portal of Smart Agri Hubs and uh, registering so that you can have access to all the different possibilities that this uh, portal provides uh, to uh, professionals, but also um, uh, consumers or uh, farmers. Next slide, please. And finally, uh, about the blockages and lessons learned during this period. Um, now we are in a phase that we are learning from the respond open call misachievements. We are a region uh, that had uh, quite a number of uh, applications for the respond open call, uh, but the results were quite uh, not as expected for most of the uh, uh, times. Um, we need to work together in order to find, um, in order to understand and do better matchmaking for the open calls that now have started, restart and expand that we will talk later about them. We have to uh, strengthen our cluster members know how exchanging partnership. We try to find additional funds, which is a big challenge. Uh, and also try to understand our differences because as I said before, this is a cluster with a large number of countries with diverse status. Next slide, please. Uh, so you can uh, all uh, contact us as a leader and co-leader of the uh, Southeast cluster uh, by uh, emailing us in the contact details that you see uh, in the presentation. And now I would like to continue uh, presenting the, the first forensic innovation experiment of the region, which is the Flux of Innovation Experiment uh, 26, uh, with title Digitizing Open Field Vegetables. Next uh, slide, please. So, uh, digitizing open field vegetables uh, is a flagship innovation experiment that uh, takes place in Greece, uh, in Attica, 
the aim of this flagship innovation experiment is to monitor and optimize the production of organic field uh, vegetables using state-of-the-art technologies uh, like deep learning and predictive analytics. Uh, it is an experiment that takes place in an organic field of uh, broccoli and our uh, partners in this sphere uh, uh, is uh, Neuropublic, a technology providing company uh, from uh, Athens. Uh, the digital innovation hub is Gersens, which is a Greek digital innovation hub. And the end user of this experiment is Marathon Bioproducts, a mega farm in Attica with uh, uh, organic vegetables. Next slide, please. The objectives uh, of our flagship innovation experiment is to increase uh, crop in input and agricultural operations efficiency, decrease environmental impact of the vegetable production, increase crop yield and quality, decrease vegetable production losses due to less pest disease and infestations, and increase consumer awareness on the quality of the vegetables production by providing more information that can be used for traceability. Next slide. Uh, for this experiment, we are using uh, two experimental parcels in a uh, marathon in which uh, we have installed two um, weather stations. Next slide. Uh, GSNs, the digital innovation hub, uh, provided the, IT, the IoT station that are installed in the fields of marathon. Neuropublic, uh, our technology providing uh, partner, is responsible for exploiting the IoT devices that monitor atmospheric and soil data through the growing season. And they also provide the cloud infrastructure where all the data is collected and processed. Uh, Neuropublic also provides the decision support services uh, for uh, creating the irrigation, fertilization, and pest uh, management models. Uh, as I said before, Marathon, the mega farm, is the end user and is possible for the daily cultivation process. Next slide. To the outputs of the Flex Innovation Experiment, uh, we have predictive, uh, predictive models, development of uh, complete predictive models for organic broccoli irrigation, fertilization, and pest control. Uh, and for which the digital innovation hub data and the data collected from the IT stations uh, are used. Next slide. Uh, the second output is the maturity estimation model. Uh, for this experiment, we develop a maturity estimation model, model uh, by correlating uh, multiple reflectance based uh, data sets during different growing stages of the broccoli. Uh, and we're correlating them with the final yield data for each grid uh, in order to create a maturity estimation model. In the images, you can see uh, the drone used with a multi-spectral camera uh, and uh, uh, at the same time during a flight uh, above the experimental uh, field. Next slide. Uh, here you can see a diagram of what, uh, what the procedure is from the remote spectral drone imagery and also from environmental data, uh, soil data, and uh, proximal uh, measurements. Uh, we create maps uh, in order to uh, uh, have yield estimation uh, and uh, have our final uh, product. Next slide. Uh, another uh, aspect of this experiment is the weed detection uh, convolutional uh, neural network, uh, which is a neural network trained uh, with the use of the multispectral uh, drone uh, image. Next slide. Uh, the neural network uh, recognizes broccoli plants, it generates a weed stress heat map. Uh, uh, from all excess vegetation, indicating areas with heavy wood. Next slide. Uh, the correlation between the final yield and the data sets collected throughout the season will be used by the Agricultural University of Athens to develop a broccoli maturity estimation model. Uh, the images from the drones uh, with the multispectral camera will also serve as inputs uh, to train the neural network for the accurate weed detections, as I mentioned before. 
Uh, on the other hand, in your public, we'll optimize the irrigation, fertilization, and pest control models uh, for broccoli. Next slide. Uh, regarding the current status of our flux innovation experiment, the IT infrastructure has been installed and uh, generates uh, a constant data stream of environmental and soil parameters from the fields. Uh, until now, the first two growing periods have been uh, concluded and uh, the measurement will be continued normally until month 30, uh, until the end of the experiment, uh, for a total of four growing seasons. Next slide. And uh, for the future, uh, the Agriculture University of Athens will continue to the <coughs> same uh, frequency uh, to complete the development of the broccoli maturity estimation model. A larger uh, data sets of drone images with multispectral cameras will continue to serve as inputs in order to uh, further train the neural network for the uh, wheat detection. And a uh, neural public will continue optimizing their models for irrigation, fertilization, and pest control uh, for uh, the organic broccoli. Next slide. So thank you very much all for your attention. Um, uh, Vasilis Psirunkis from the Agricultural University of Athens is the coordinator of the experiment. So you can see his uh, contacts uh, in order you need to further uh, ask any detailed um, the questions and also in the in this webinar we have neuropublic our uh, tech providing uh, company partner uh, available uh, also for uh, questions regarding technical aspects uh, of the experiment thank you very much uh, for your attention uh, i believe we have time for uh, one question if there is any okay. we can proceed with flagship innovation experiment 27 and our presenter will be ovidio vladu uh, from Romania. I'm ready. So hello to everybody, first of all, and I would like to introduce, first of all, our digital innovation hub, which is called Cluster M Agro. Uh, this is very important for our uh, region because we try to recuperate some delays in this type of uh, association and this uh, the farmers in Romania they usually do not like to associate our holdings are very small and there are only few big farmers which uh, held something like 80 percent our target is to bring those groups together and this is the reason why two years ago we started this project with uh, Emagro we, uh, as FIA uh, 27, via two companies, we are a part of it. So I'm presenting this cluster uh, on behalf of uh, Dr. Frink, which is the president of this uh, cluster. And I underline that uh, during this project, we understood here in Romania, rather later than soon, that if we will not be a part of uh, such a big network like uh, Smart Agri Hub is, our successful uh, will be in doubt. So next slide, please. Uh, first of all, we have to introduce in the Romanian mentality and in the Romanian environment, this uh, idea of a cluster in agriculture. Of course, we have some clusters for the IT, especially in the northwest part of Romania. But uh, working to, together, it's not a characteristic of our uh, population. So we try to introduce and we try to explain and we try to what is happening with this and why this, uh, this cluster is necessary. So our cluster is an NGO which is identifying and collating the members' know-how, scientific research portfolio, and other resources for a fair dissemination and distribution in between the members as an interior flow. So basically, we have not more than six characteristics. The second one is that we are designated as a hub for the vast European clusters and similar entities, mass as the hubs and the DIH, for the benefit of the members in a multiple direction. 
So this is a notion that uh, the, the people hardly understand why they should associate, why should they put together their efforts, their resources, and why it's necessary that those should be splitted and disseminated. Uh, then our cluster is a cooperation platform specialized in the edge and, and the intersection of the ITNC and agri-food sector. ITNC uh, sector does not have till 2007, when we joined the European community, a major impact. Since different schemes and payment schemes to subsidize and encourage the agriculture sector arrived in 2007, nobody was interested and nobody cares about the impact. So from our point of view, to come into such a network and share the all the valuable initiatives and all the initiatives and the innovation, it's our main target and the main goal. Our cluster is focused and centered on the farmer on the other side and the, on the consumer on the other side. So we unfortunately experienced uh, a very strong deep state, as we are saying right now, and the, the farmers, they are not encouraged. The farmers, they are not subsidized properly and they are not educated. Sometimes they do not have access to the internet. They do not have uh, access to the information. And they are uh, in a way marginalized. From our point of view, putting them in the center of our preoccupation will bring not only added value, but will bring life for them. We unfortunately witness uh, a decreasing number of farmers. We're starting a project in agriculture almost 16 years ago, and I can say that we're in Romania 2.3 million farmers and uh, which were breeding animals. In this moment, there are not more than 1.1 million, out of which only 400,000 they are getting subsidies and they are getting support from the government. On the other side, our cluster is an incubator for research and innovation with direct connection to any kind of beneficiary in the implementation and immediate dissemination into the network. There are a lot of research institutes. We are in the, uh, now in the step to contact them and to explain them the advantages. They are, they do not have, they are just researchers and they do not have too many ideas about how to put their innovation and idea into practice. We are trying to bring exactly as the project was designed by the founders in this Smart Agri Hubs, to bring immediately the innovation and to bring the, the good idea and good practices into life. And far least but not last, our cluster is looking for synergies and further development with similar structures from, uh, from Europe. And we will uh, expose our policy and we are waiting for the, as we discussed from the beginning, for the catalog of all the inputs which we can disseminate also in Romania. Next slide, please. Uh, regarding the members, it's very important to men mention that uh, the founders of these clusters are dealing with more than 500,000 animals and more than 25,000 holdings. So this critical mass, uh, it's, uh, it's giving us the support that everything what is in Europe can be disseminated in this uh, big number of farmers. And we have also to implement with, uh, in a very successful way for more than 500 animals. So we are waiting for any project which is interesting and uh, we are enlarging our object of activities. If we can see here, we, we have uh, different other uh, uh, from vegetable sectors, like we have, for instance, the Romanian Corn Producers Association, which we started the project. We have also from uh, Vegetable Area, very interesting cooperation. 
we are also trying to bring with us uh, the governmental sector it's not very easy but we manage with uh, the new management with the new ministry of uh, agriculture we have excellent relationship with the agricultural paying agency which is one of those two paying agency from Romania. One is taking care about subsidies and one from the one for the investment. And of course, with our National Authority for Food Safety and Veterinary Service. Also, we have a, a very interesting agreement with the Associ Romanian National Association of the Local Counties, which consists of more than 2,800 communes. Next slide, please. So our objectives are uh, clearly stated in our status and uh, what is very important for, uh, for, for the purpose of this discussion is that we are trying to put our efforts in uh, introducing not only this new idea of the cluster, but also the benefit of being a part of the smart agri-hubs uh, from Europe. Uh, from this point of view, we think that we have to cooperate more and more, not only to find out synergies, but to bring into life uh, everything that we can uh, we can put together as an uh, as an effort. So I, I was delighted to participate in Prague and also in uh, Novi Sad conference, and I saw a lot of potential, but I do not see uh, an effort to budget such dissemination of information uh, in each country. I saw, I visited actually some uh, national institutes which they were creating incredible uh, assets which can be implemented, incredible project, but they are completely unknown. So from our perspective to um, maybe a call for, um, to support this kind of uh, digging. We have to dig for what is happening in Romania, for what is happening in the region nearby. The people, they do not know how to share. They are regularly prisoners to our way of thinking, and especially the researchers, they do not know anything about how to publish their work, how to implement, and how to disseminate the information and how to come to with their input into clusters like ours i saw that and i'm uh, i think that if we will have uh, the chance for uh, for future development a lot of uh, inputs will come in uh, in our uh, in our area next slide please what did we achieve during this period of time we had a lot of uh, meetings and workshops with all the members. And uh, this is important for us because we come together and we share the ideas and we are already in the stage of preparing a strategy for the next uh, five years. We have four regional conferences with farmers and farmers association. A dialogue like this will bring us a lot of inputs and I think this is as I mentioned before, a very important solution to come to some results. We make a farmer database, farmer database with our members, work which is in progress. We make an intangible asset inventory, meaning all the intangible valuables which can bring added value to our farmers. We built a web page for, uh, for our cluster and we have an internet platform work in progress, uh, which will touch all the entities which are involved. And also we have uh, realized smart mobile application for farmers, for vegetal se sectors and also for animal sectors. Our next projects are related with uh, realizing a marketplace for farmers on mobile devices a stock exchange for animals and the uh, new streaming line for farmers information and also dedicated communication channel with the governmental entities 
Next slide, please. Uh, sorry, Ovidio, to intervene. Uh, you have only one more minute. Okay, no problem. For the fear, was... so, okay, okay. So, so fear, uh, in the fear, next slide, please. For fear 27, uh, our project, which is quick and mass animal identification with IO2 device, we try to improve and streamline the traceability regarding the animal movements using transient information tag. To resume, our partners are described here, to resume the project, because I do not have more time, is that we are trying to put an add-on on the, on the device, on a normal ear tag, which is an IoT consisting of a battery and a platform, which will track the movements, and we are trying to achieve very important thing, the a reliable, reusable, and rewritable device based on the Bluetooth low energy as an IoT. And the name of the, the device, it's a transient, transient information tag, which is an add-on to track the movements during the transport. This can influence in future the, the, the whole concept of animal identification because the Bluetooth, if, it's, if we prove that it's a viable solution for the animal identification, will avoid in future any document, any written document and any forms which actually is now a strong barrier in the, in the way of uh, animal identification and especially in the animal movement. Next slide, please. So here we have the fact sheet, the challenges and the core product teacher. We are targeting 100 farms, which will, uh, and uh, some things like 2000 animals, which will, will uh, will track during this uh, during this uh, demonstration minimum 100 animals will be will be will have this trans tit which will track the movement of the animals next slide please this is how the the roughly the uh, tit is looking for it's this is the add on which is attached to any to any because they are almost standard any uh, ear tag next slide please these are the designs the battery and the the platform the the iot device the next slide and our core and main preoccupation is to enter into the future EU regulation 2016-429, which is monitoring the health together with the animal identification and traceability of the animals. So this is a complicated scheme, but it's not necessary to be explained. It's a, this rule will enter into force in April 2021, and we are prepared to introduce our technology uh, as an add-on to this uh, to this new regulation to fulfill all and to be compliant with all the requirements. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ovidio, uh, for this very interesting presentation. Uh, I would like now to invite Yuri uh, Skornik to present Flagship Innovation Experiment 28. I would also like to uh, request that we stick to the schedule and not to be very delayed. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the, I'll try to uh, try to stick to the 10 minutes, of course. Um, so hi, I'm Yuri um, from uh, uh, Trace Labs. We are the flagship innovation experiment 28, um, working on decentralized trust in uh, agri-food supply chains. Uh, next slide, please. 
Um, and what are we? What is our overall aim uh, that we're trying to achieve? We're trying to demonstrate the value of uh, data exchange uh, between different stakeholders in uh, agri-food supply chains by decentralizing trust with the use of uh, blockchain technology. Uh, in our case, specifically uh, implementing the open source Origin Trail protocol. Now, this is a bit of a mouthful, but we'll explain it as we as we go uh, through the through the slides. And we're working on uh, uh, on this with our uh, digital innovation hub, uh, Biosense uh, Institute, um, that is helping us uh, push this forward. Uh, next slide, please. Um, what are we trying to achieve? What are specific objectives that we're trying to get through uh, through uh, this uh, uh, flagship innovation experiment? Three main things. Uh, first thing being interoperability. Uh, we're talking about inter interoperability across multiple legacy systems of um, uh, agriculture, uh, agri-food supply chains. Um, we have two specific use cases. One is poultry, one is dairy, and we'll go through them. Uh, I'll go through them uh, briefly uh, in a bit. Um, second piece or second objective is uh, data integrity. We're trying to, um, uh, on one hand, get interoperability, and on the other hand, get that data integrity that uh, distributed ledger technology uh, brings. Uh, here we're using the Origin Trail decentralized network. Uh, and the third piece being, so based on uh, both points above, both objectives above, uh, we're trying to deliver, of course, value adding pilots that are using this secure uh, and uh, connected data with integrity to actually uh, deliver business, uh, business improvements. Uh, next slide, please. Um, going into the first use case is our uh, poultry uh, supply chain use case where our goal is really to uh, uh, connect or establish uh, greater visibility within the uh, poultry supply chain and deliver um, better product authenticity and validation of superior farming practices. Now, in a sense, um, this is more consumer focused uh, as we're helping, uh, and here we're working, by the way, with Perutnina Ptui, which is one of the, I think, actually the largest poultry producer in Southeastern Europe. Uh, and um, we're actually helping them empower consumers to really be able to explore the provenance of the meat that they're buying all the way back to the farm and seeing its journey. And uh, the consumers can do that or will be able to do that uh, uh, even, even further down the line. Uh, with uh, by scanning a QR code on the packaging and then accessing the uh, the connected data that is part of the systems that we are connecting, um, and more specifically in this system, in this uh, in this use case we're connecting data from different farmers and the food processor on uh, on the other hand. Um, going further, so going beyond just using the the origin travel uh, network and the decentralized data exchange for traceability, we're also um, supporting um, process claims uh, for premium products with additional uh, information. So uh, we're talking about IoT data, uh, pictures, uh, time lapses, and here we're actually working with our partner, um, Kakaxi, and we'll talk about this in, in a little bit uh, as, as, um, when we're talking about next steps. Uh, but that's kind of, that would be a rough summary of, um, of the poultry use case uh, and what we're doing with them. Um, next slide, please. Um, on the second use case that we're doing, so the dairy supply chain, we have a slightly uh, different angle. So we're still connecting supply chain stakeholders to deliver that product authenticity on one hand. But on the other hand, in this case is also about process efficiencies. So how can we improve business processes? And uh, in this case, we're working with a large Slovenian cooperative, uh, connecting, uh, connecting data from across farms, uh, the cooperative itself, uh, processors, and also dairy laboratories. Uh, that are performing um, that are performing tests on the milk, uh, and uh, in a, in a way, this this experiment is also it has the consumer focus uh, from an uh, authenticity point of view, but there is a large focus, as mentioned before, also on streamlining internal business processes, which are um, related actually to um, to automated or to payment uh, uh, payments to uh, milk uh, dairy farmers. And here we're really looking at uh, going beyond that traceability um, into into going into exploring or using our origin trail decentralized network as a trusted oracle where um, we can we can then set up blockchain based uh, automated uh, executions of payments from the cooperative stores farmers based on you know what the milk quality was and uh, where uh, where the milk came from. Um, so that would be um, a rough sum of the of the dairy case. Next slide, please. 
Um, so what are our latest advancements? What are what have we been we've been doing? So from an overall point of view, looking at the origin trail open source technology, we've had some significant improvements to uh, to this underlying tech, um, which um, really enables several uh, several um, or better interoperability going down the line. Um, most two most important pieces are, for example, the integration of public and private data sharing. So uh, organizations are now able to share and secure not only public data on, on our network, but also have, keep certain data private and share it with the only specific stakeholders in a supply chain. Uh, and we also have uh, developed the uh, uh, data marketplace infrastructure where um, data sets can be, for example, sold and, and purchased by, uh, um, for example, by sold by farmers, purchased by producers to, uh, to uh, have additional data for uh, quality claims. Uh, and we've validated this with our partners at uh, BSI, the so British Standards Institution, on a number of use cases, uh, giving us uh, high, high levels of confidence. And uh, all of this, so why I'm talking about all of this, all of this, all of these developments are actually supporting the implementations of both of the use cases, on one hand, uh, poultry and the other dairy. Uh, and um, they also open up opportunities to actually for us to expand them. So to just go also as we, um, a wrap up, of course, at the end of the year, uh, the 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 innovation exper the flagship innovation experiment to also expand the use cases that we have built on with additional things. Uh, for example, data economy, um, uh, sharing uh, sharing additional private uh, data sets and whatnot. Um, now, in terms of poultry, what what were our latest advancements? Just a quick quick sum up. We've connected data from two data sources. Um, uh, we set up manual imports. Um, so, and one of the one of the data sources is actually a uh, an IoT device by, from our partner Kakaxi, that is essentially a self-sustaining camera and weather station that records five IoT uh, readings and uh, creates a time lapse of uh, um, of whatever it's looking at. So, essentially, the in our case, the poultry producer is then able to display, show to the customers, would will be able to display to the customer for that batch of chicken that they were truly you know, out in the open that they were, uh, that they were, um, that they had the sustainable practice they claim they have. Um, on dairy side, on the dairy side, we've identified three data sources that we're uh, connecting. We've connected them, uh, we've analyzed this sample data and connected them. And the next step is now to, to set up the actual data imports that will be coming in uh, to our site. Um, next slide, please. Uh, now, in terms of plans for the future, so um, from a uh, from a um, uh, the FIE uh, FIE 28 uh, um, angle or perspective, we are now the next step is uh, for us to automate all of these imports uh, that, that I just uh, uh, talked about, um, so that we uh, have the the data coming in um, uh, securely and automatically. Uh, and then finalize, of course, the development of the user interfaces and uh, and everything associated with that. Uh, and then we also want to uh, move move down to the um, uh, to offer this these learnings that we've had through this flagship innovation experiment uh, uh, to offer them to you know other European food companies to national uh, and international projects. Um, we're already um, we have just a couple of months actually begun another. A project called the Food Safety Market, uh, which will uh, definitely benefit from the learnings from the Smart Agri Hubs project. Um, uh, we have another national uh, food uh, traceability scheme that we're working on um, that will also benefit greatly from the lessons learned here. Um, so this will really then all of these uh, learnings and uh, uh, and takeaways that we've had from this will really help us then reach the. Uh, our uh, company target of, of uh, having 100,000 plus organizations benefiting from trace lab technologies by uh, by the end of 2023, uh, and really thus expanding the decentralized knowledge graph uh, repository uh, and uh, moving towards that uh, wisdom and uh, going beyond knowledge, moving towards that wisdom and our vision of autonomous supply chains um, sometimes uh, in the near future. And that's why we like to use the um, the um, uh, Google for supply chains uh, um, uh, saying, but uh, that's essentially um, kind of the overall overall picture uh, going also a bit beyond the the, the smart agri hubs. Um, and I think that would be it from my side. And I think it was hopefully I did not overrun that much. <laughs> Thank you, Yuri for your presentation.
Uh, now we will proceed uh, with Viorel and his presentation about the open calls. Okay, thank you, Mike. I will try to be as brief as possible, uh, which is not uh, usually my normal state <laughs> to be so brief. Okay, so um, uh, we heard till now what happened in the first half of the project. Now um, let's talk a little bit and think about the second half of the project. So the second half of the project will be mainly concentrating on um, on the open calls, restart and expand. So uh, as uh, uh, all Smart AgriHub's colleagues know, uh, that have been developed a series of open calls, starting with Respond, which uh, was meant uh, for um, uh, to address challenges uh, created by the COVID pandemic situation. And uh, so after the Respond open calls ended, I think that uh, Mike can add to his uh, numbers, figures and facts uh, that we have two entities uh, uh, that have been approved for the grant for hackathons, one from Slovenia and one from Romania. And now for the, the next two, restart and expand. So restart will uh, basically follow the respond hackathon, datathon and challenges uh, aspects, but uh, now uh, there, will, there won't be with 100% grant, but it will be on uh, on 2080 rule and expand, which is for uh, our normal plant innovation experiments that uh, uh, we hope that uh, a lot of or as many as possible organization and partnership from Southeast Europe will attend to. So next slide, please. So as you see, the, some key characteristics, uh, funding is exclusively for, uh, for other than actual beneficiary in the project, uh, DIH and uh, CCs and uh, competence centers. The overall budget uh, will assign a maximum of 20% which is uh, mainly dedicated for DIH uh, uh, services, uh, expanding uh, new services, and the rest of 80% uh, are uh, according to the project in order to be secured through matching funds from third parties, either private or uh, public. Uh, any DIH can ask from one or several experiments. He can participate not only to one, he can participate to several. Cannot ask for more than 100,000 euros funding in total. So um, uh, now if we want to resume uh, for restart, there will be um, a grant uh, Smart Agri Hubs uh, provision of up to 60,000 euro. And for expand, there will be a maximum of 500,000 euros. So uh, this means that the project, uh, all the proposed experiments uh, uh, can, can be of variable sizes. Uh, okay, uh, not if it's one to five, let's say they can be more than 2.5 million euros. Next slide, please. So the basic approach is to mainly strengthen the new DIH to participate and to access uh, funds and to, uh, to promote their uh, innovative experiments. And uh, in this way to, to validate all services from DIH and CCs from our region, but not only from our region. So partnership are open to uh, all uh, all countries participating to, to the SAC project. And uh, as you see in the figures, so it is based like uh, we see in uh, Smart Agri Hubs connecting the dots. So uh, it is very good to share and to connect with uh, as many as necessary partners 
and uh, in order to uh, let's say to apply the state of the art in uh, in digital technologies like ai iot big data robotics and so on uh, to uh, to have quite outstanding projects and proposals uh, for the uh, for the next two open calls next slide in terms of budget and funding uh, as as I said, uh, that can be a contribution from uh, from the project from 100,000 to 500,000 as a grant. But uh, you can see in the table there are, let's say, summarized a little bit uh, what are the major, uh, let's say, conditions and uh, funding procedures uh, either for uh, non-profit entities, for-profit entities, and uh, and so on. But just to be to be very careful that uh, any experiment should have at least one DIH involved and one DIH to be the coordin the coordinator of the project. Next slide. These are also some uh, uh, some figures uh, in terms of uh, criteria that will be used for evaluation. Next one. Next slide. Also, you have the evaluation for the hackathon in the, the hackathon type of proposals that will be in restart. Next, next slide, please. And uh, now, with the help of Patrick, there is a, a little recording because I didn't want to enter into too many details because all of them you can access this directly from the portal. So, uh, Patrick, if you can uh, start the recording. So, as you see, anybody can sign in for free. After signing in, they, uh, they can go to the open call menu item. And then in the open call, they have all the details necessary in order to complete and assemble a good proposal. So there is, a, let's say, an executive on the main page. And then if you go up again, you will see on the, on the right side that there are links to all the documents. So all you need in order to have all details is to download the restart and expand open call program and uh, frequently ask questions. And then uh, you, can, you can find all the answer. And in the same time, you can go to the forum. And in the forum, you can find the open calls uh, item that you can there are a lot of clarification. You can ask questions to the work package to leaders and the uh, staff, and you receive the answers. So there is everything at hand. It's quite easy to access and to, to, to use. And uh, um, everything we would like is to see as many of our, uh, of our colleagues in the, in the regional cluster to make outstanding projects and uh, access the grants. So uh, now I will go to uh, the next presenter. So because we will, they will be followed with uh, the presentation of uh, Daniel, which is uh, another champion in terms of uh, uh, digital transformation in Slovenia. And uh, then it will be another competence center from Romania. So two good example about new hubs and competence center that are perfectly eligible for the, for the next grant. Daniel, please. Thanks a lot, uh, Viorel. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, I was I'm delighted to be able to present Digital Innovation Hub AgriFood. Of course, um, um, since this uh, situation is now limiting us um, in order to do proper uh, presentations and networking, I'm, I'm, we, unfortunately, we have to do it like that. Otherwise, 
Uh, I have some problems with the sitting down and speaking. Uh, normally, I'm I'm jumping around like monkey at those presentations. So I, I will try to do my best in order to keep my my brain working while sitting. So um, if you go to the next slide, please. Um, so the the basically we are coming from innovation technology cluster, which is a cluster uh, focused in uh, smartification of uh, sectors which are more rurally uh, uh, linked. But uh, in in deep we 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 are more related to agriculture and food production. So we we are in this this uh, a sec covering more this sector, and traditionally we have been a technology transfer office. Uh, so if you there are some pictures down there from the country which we are coming. It's a land of diversity. Uh, we are coming from a north uh, eastern part of Slovenia, bordering to uh, to Hungary, Croatia, and Austria. And it's a flat land, so it's a, a, a region which is more or less agricultural land. Um, next slide. If um, I go into um, explaining the reasons why we have established a digital innovation hub, AgriFood, of course we need. You know that we need to produce more food with less resources in the future. One of the possible solutions in order to achieve that is, of course, through digital transformation. And it's also a, a challenge that we need to not only use res, less resources, but we need to produce food which is environmentally friendly. And then we, we also need to take into consideration other aspects of this kind of a production. So in order, if you have a, taken a look of all the technologies, trends, uh, and, and of course challenges with digital transformation, you could see that there is there is a big need in order to organize ourselves differently in order to support target groups. And if you want to support target groups, I have to tell you that farmers, we need to put farmers and target groups in the center of our focus because one of the biggest, uh, uh, how to say, um, negative conclusions out of uh, European Commission is that, um, uh, that the development money or money, uh, public money is not reaching target groups. That's That's the the biggest problem and then with digital transformation we need to basically transform those players right so um, that's why we we decided if you go to the next slide of course how we see it is a solution in the establishing a digital innovation hub next slide please so the answer is um, digital innovation hub which of course is founded uh, following the the uh, how to say the 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 way of work or or the um, definition of uh, coming from European Commission and of course also being developed through many projects. But I like the way how we approach this is through. Uh, I remember this uh, Kilkenny uh, Kilkenny uh, uh, workshop where we have been sitting together in order to develop the digital innovation hub and how how this should work. Uh, and and there was uh, of course Grigoris who was then. Uh, as introducing this kind of uh, approach. So it, we, we can see Digital Innovation Hub as a kind of a coral reef, uh, where all, uh, of course all the, all the uh, players would need to come or would be willing to come in order to, to, uh, to, to have added value. Um, and we should start collaborating and sharing. And that I would like to also tell to, of course, uh, Mr. Vladu, presenting the challenges in, in Romania, we have the same challenges. Uh, we also know how to speak about cooperation, but we, we don't, we have difficulties living it. So that's why we decided to found the Digital Innovation Hub a little bit differently, maybe more, uh, more um, um, how to say, unconventionally. Next slide, please. Uh, so it, our Digital Innovation Hub is, of course, multi-actor approach. So we have founders who are coming from different type of organizations. I, I will not now uh, mention because it, it's a well-known approach, but we have a non-formal structure. So there is no formal uh, organization which is uh, called the Digital Innovation Hub, and we don't have any membership. So we literally want to build a kind of a coral reef that, um, that doesn't have uh, um, uh, those complex rules, uh, um, regulations, uh, even contracts, um, we want to have it as a kind of a very open 
open innovation based uh, approach where the, the, you are all everybody is welcome to the to the network and they are also having all the tools available to share and to how to say to to take what is there to take of course we count on the fact that members should be active so they they it's up to them how how they want to benefit from this kind of a co collaboration and this is the way how we operate it um, so we say that uh, digital innovation hub agrifood should be the synonym of digital transformation for farmers and food producers but not only in slovenia because the agrifood is covering uh, a whole europe so um, we are not um, treated as a national digital innovation hub although of course we have a big representation in slovenia and in southeast european region uh, and this is traditionally of course because we have the most uh, the biggest network there next slide please um yes next one uh, we want to be keep it as simple as smart uh, of course uh following that that philosophy uh but uh, if we move further um you know we want to be very concrete uh, next slide please uh so we are covering uh, so we we consider ourselves a very horizontal uh, uh, um, network so we are covering many different technical technological aspects of digital transformation and we are not of course going into deeply into the certain topic um, of course um, this is why we have target groups who are basically solution providers but um, uh, we do we do distinguish what is or have a framework of our focus and it is, this is digital transformation in agriculture and food production of course as a as a main main focal point but we do also cover short food supply chains and gastronomy because those two areas of course are very important and um, they need a little bit different approach and of course uh, for instance gastronomy in our region especially in our country is also one of the four main pillars of economic development and of course we have a huge amount of small uh, tourist farms which are of course also in the context of digital transformation very important uh, next slide please now in order to concrete to have a concrete i mean there is a question about how digital innovation hub should be sustainable right or everybody is looking into have a sustainable development uh, then again uh, we need to be very concrete so with digital innovation hub we developed seven layers of services uh, which you can see i will not read them out of course there are different um, um, those services are basically very well supported by our members uh, founding members so some of those are covering mentoring more some of them are covering innovation scouting and technology transfer more so there is a mix of services that are being provided by members but it is important to say that they do understand how they support digital innovation hub and we what is our role is basically to teach them how they can develop digital innovation hub on a sustainable uh, manner so instead of having uh, for instance one project which is directed into digital innovation hub and then we have a problem when this project is ending that uh, that you have a problem with sustainability we are building projects around the digital innovation hub and we take bits and pieces of those uh, of those projects and building a sustainable network and with a sustainable set of services next slide please So I would like to show you just uh, some examples of the projects which I like the most because they are very, uh, very concrete. Um, so we want to be kind of a, we want to channel the opportunities and also uh, public finances uh, um, to our target groups. And of course, in order to do that, they need a lot of support. You, it doesn't just go that somebody is applying and then, then he gets money and then he do, does something. So there is really a need for digital innovation hub actors to help target groups in order to collect uh, a public funding with new digital technologies you know how it is they, they they are not able to invest by themselves at least early you know tech, uh, early starters uh, and also they need all sorts of different additional support technical support you know uh, uh, that we are providing so for instance we have this uh, iof use case which is very very good because we have basically equipped 12 farms and three supply chains with iot and uh, this what, what is so special about it is that 
basically we have been equipping very small farmers. You know, Slovenia is very fragmented. We have huge amount of small farmers and it's very difficult to get them using digital technologies, you know. So uh, there is a small step done in, in this respect. And all those farmers had only uh, had, had their first experience with digital technology. So success was really great. And they are reluctant. Of course, they don't want to use anything. They don't want to pay anything. And in fact, you have to come to there, you know, s explaining, yeah, it's everything is for free. You just need to start collaborating. Just open your mind and, and start, start, uh, start uh, working on things. The next slide, please. Um, it's uh, the, the next very good example, uh, example is uh, the Meta project where we are not uh, uh, where we are full full partners and uh, here we are equipping five farms with uh, technologies. Uh, we are covering poultry orchards and vineyards, and again um, here we have we have the opportunity because the the, the, the funding uh, the cascade funding call will be open soon. So you are also very well invited to to participate in this call, but in in our case we are working already on on those uh, five farms uh, with uh, with technologies so the the, the story is similar to to the previous case next slide please um yes um vrl said that there are two hackathons that will be uh, implemented in the region so we are one of them uh, thanks a lot for smart agri hubs to to acknowledge uh, and, and, and to, um, how to say, to enable us to uh, enroll this, uh, this very important event. So we will have a hackathon, Farm to Fork hackathon, which will be organized in uh, August, but uh, it will be a process. So it will not be a one day event. It will be an open call coming. Uh, all uh, interested solution providers uh, will be uh, invited to participate. And um, of course, then we will come to the end with a final event in August uh, through a, uh, a training, through a mentoring process, which will be done uh, in, in the scope of one month prior to August, to that uh, deadline. Uh, sorry, not August, but November. So the activities will be rolling out uh, starting from now until November, which will then we will end in November with the final, final event, which will be organized in Ljubljana but it will be a remote event because of, of course, knowing, knowing the situation. Next slide, please. Um, yes, the, I would like to sh just conclude my presentation. So the Digital Innovation Hub is, uh, as I said, the network. We are uh, using uh, Agri-Food Cooperation Platform as our main, how to say, networking platform. Uh, currently, we have more than 800 members um, and we are reaching more than 6,000 uh, organizations throughout Europe. We are hosting 25 projects, two thematic networks. We are host. We are so we have identified 150 uh, products and services which we are of course promoting. Uh, we have also 20 living lab cases. And what is important is that we are of course um, among. Uh, I mean, we are we are a family of digital innovation hubs. So we have more than 50 digital innovation hubs. Uh, 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 around uh, Europe, uh, which are also members of DIH AgriFood. Uh, we also host 80, more than 80 support organizations. And what is very important is that this is not just a database. So it's ba the, the, the Digital Innovation Hub is based on facilitation. So there is uh, more than 20 facilitators from seven countries who are basically evangelists of Digital Innovation Hub and they do, next slide please, if, if I move to the next slide. So those facilitators are basically people who are, uh, who are representing this network, so who are representing the, the organizations, who know about solutions, and they're able to understand farmer needs, they're able to connect supply and demand, they are able to facilitate the process of transformation, uh, gathering financial support, and uh, of course, they are also excellent demonstrators and promoters. And what we are basically doing, we are focused in teaching uh, a growing network of facilitators to be able to understand and support the, the, how, how Digital Innovation Up should be operating in the future. Thanks a lot. Uh, next slide is the, probably the last one. Uh, thanks a lot for your um, attention. And hopefully, I didn't spend too much time. Uh, I'm uh, 
open for any questions and of course you are you are all welcome to register at uh, uh, and and write us and register at our uh, our platform thanks a lot okay daniel thank you very much for your presentation we all agree that it's quite difficult for you uh, to present so many things in such a short period of time and without jumping uh, so uh Okay, now we will go to the to the last presentation, which uh, it's uh, uh, this time it's a competence center. Uh, it's a competence center which is based in Romania and in uh, Canada, that has a real breakthrough solution, uh, artificial intelligence solution, that can be. Uh, a partner to any type of project because it deals with metadata on AI anticipation on any factor you want to analyze. So from this point of view, uh, I um, uh, give the floor to uh, uh, to Andre that uh, uh, will present you uh, their anticipation prediction AI solution. Andre. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Viorel. Thank you for the invitation. Sorry for not being visible. It's a security feature that uh, doesn't allow my computer to share my camera. I will use a different uh, solution next time. I will start by saying that uh, I was um, really happy to see all the examples and all the presentations that were before because the, the real uh, interaction started with Viorel was to identify partners uh, and their specific problems related to their needs to anticipate. And uh, as there were several calls uh, already uh, in this direction, we have started to identify with VRL uh, this type of partnerships and the scope uh, for our interaction with the domain. So um, we are presenting this together with the partner in CBU and uh, I prefer to start uh, with mentioning this because our capability, and if we go to the next slide, please, our capability is uh, basically to allow any data set to be anticipated. And the anticipation uh, is based on a scientific framework that is combining various laws of uh, physics and statistics so it's not a um, um, not understandable framework. It's not a machine learning neural networks uh, driven capability. It's fully automated. And uh, the most relevant part is it's domain agnostic. This means that the framework is unaware that the data set that is being consumed comes from a specific domain. So the anticipation is executed at the data level. If we go to the next slide, uh, you will see uh, our first domain of uh, interaction was the financial domain. And in the financial domain, the exercise that we have been able to demonstrate was a very simple one. Here, what you see, you see two curves. The red curve represents the curve that is the average performance of the best 500 companies in the world in the period of time between 2014, August, and June 2020. Out of those 500 companies, in 2014, we were able to select a subgroup that is identified by the blue line, a subgroup that we, at that time, said that will outperform in the future the average performance of the entire group. This is the public demonstration because this product has been listed as an index with NASDAQ in 2014. They have executed a backtest on 10 years historical data running the same process and they've seen the performance or the potential historical performance that could have been generated. And after doing the test, they have um, accepted to co-brand it with us and to list it. What I want to add to this uh, chart is that besides the validation of the fact that we were able to anticipate which were the components that will outperform the rest of the group. There is a last event that happened in Q1, Q2 this year related to the virus that is called in the financial market a, a black swan type of event, an unexpected event. And 
what you see in the curves here related to that event is that when our group encountered that event it was able to go through those events and recover quicker than the entire group so not only that we are able to to select the components that are outperforming the rest of the group we are also able to identify the ones that are best fit for any future market scenario this is this is a simple exemplification in the financial domain and what we are using to build this capability it's a very simple data set the data set that was used in finance was the history of the price of the stocks we are not computing all the data that we can find or not find we are just looking at this data set as a very significant data set for us because of its consistency the price itself has a lot of information inside i will not spend more time on the financial uh, explanation and i will uh, move to the next slides because the interaction with the smart farming domain it's uh, basically for us something that is very close as the farming problem was always to identify what to farm on which field this was the anticipation problem that created basically the need for all the sciences that we have today assisting us in various other problems and for us the the link with any other market it's direct through data smart farming has started to collect data we don't need all the data like other systems we need significant data set that the, the client the partner would like to analyze and we can start with a simple understanding of that specific data set afterwards we can explore other factors and we can start building correlations to be able to re relate to those other data sets the understandings that we are able to uncover the the slide here is presenting uh, our vision to be able to create an interaction between data owners data providers mechanisms that are extracting intelligence like ours and people that will use that solutions or that those results in a chain of partnerships and all those working together will generate an excess that can be shared and the reward distributed to all the participants this is in brief what we are with what we are seeing and i, I uh, really liked uh, daniel your uh, analogy with the uh, coral reef and uh, and the competition environment that we are seeing and we are living in all around us and that's that's also consolidating here in the smart agri hubs environment if we go to the next slide because i want to move forward to the domain um, not only when a crisis hits the anticipation is vital it's all over the time but we are tempted to neglect it or to ignore it because once we understand the trends and when the trend is easy to be understood because it's either growing either decaying it's easy to anticipate knowing that trend when the trend becomes hard to understand the need for anticipation is even bigger and here um, we are 100% uh, aligned with the the call for uh, solutions in the smart agri food um, chain because we see many areas where the abnormal situations that could be identified up front would possibly help us um, avoid avoid losing big amounts of money if we speak about uh, financial loss but also will avoid put us into uh, um, various other more dangerous situations that will be at, in the end uh, critical for our existence and these are linked to all the all the possible problems that can appear along the chains from production distribution uh, retail and so on and so forth for us the data driven intelligence is the key for decision support and once we will be able to understand that anticipation has a solution so we have a solution for anticipation and we can use that solution for anticipation to enhance our future outcomes then we will be able to generate more with the same resources if we go to the next slide the problem that uh, we have 
and it's not only in in agriculture it's it's um, uh, related to the poor tooling set that we have that the tooling set that we have for anticipation are um, antique let me put it this way are are um, uh, used uh, more in a discretionary manner and we are more uh, relying ourselves on our own observations that's why sometimes we are definitely wrong because we are not equipped with the computation power to execute probabilities of probabilities as humans the connected problems to this are are, are obvious because the general food the supply decrease and the aim to produce more with less resources is just um, creating many many other risks that are very well perceived if we move on for the next slide the the solution that we uh, have already in the financial domain is mature we have more than five years track record we have tens of millions being invested with clients in four different geographies today and uh, we have already started to build mvps in other domains we have mvps in energy sentiment data in retail we are currently building one and we have just entered the, the smart farming at the beginning of this year the benefits for our uh, users directly that can be generated out of a simple mvp is to help them understand future trend change in their data set and that can be related to the crop anticipation, to the optimization of harvesting, to all the analysis, analyzing geospatial uh, imagery to be able to identify and anticipate uh, everything related to the crop, uh, including all, all possible attackers and uh, uh, other type of anomalies. We can look at any data set and we need the partner, the counterpart, to be the one that is prioritizing from his perspective the anticipation problems. This, this is what we are looking for. This is why we have, uh, again, come here for, for this specific interaction to be able to assist once those are identified with, with possible solutions to answer them. I'd like to thank you again for the invitation and uh, invite you to uh, address questions. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Andre. So um, please uh, contact him for any data set. I have one question, Andre. How long, yes. what is the time frame uh, from the moment the client is giving you a data set until you provide him with a prediction results? So it can be weeks. The only question is the transformation for the data that is required and the size of the data set. It depends on, on its own size. When I speak about this, it's, it's more about manipulation time. It's, it's, it's hand-holding. And that's why we are presenting this type of approach where uh, our capability can be plugged in to other existing frameworks through us directly. So it can be used as a SaaS or we can work, as in this case, with Transylvania Labs that are uh, integrating software and data flows and helping us fasten this connection so it's a matter of weeks a matter of weeks so it's uh, quite quite amazing so um, i think everybody would like to see the future yeah so uh, uh, i hope that uh, sooner or later we'll we'll be able to see the future in agri-food and to avoid risk and disruptions and uh, anything that uh, might might affect the supply chain operation okay thank you thank you so you can uh, see that we have uh, uh, last five minutes until two o'clock when uh, our uh, webinar is closed. So we would like to dedicate these five minutes to any possible questions that the audience might have to the to all the speakers. You can also use the chat uh, in the control panel to ask a question or um, uh, say a comment about what you've seen during this webinar.
We're all ears. And of course, all speakers will be available after the webinar. We have uh, provided you with uh, our contact details and we will, be we will be available for any questions or discussions that you may want to do. So I think uh, with lack of more, this is that everybody was quite shocked from all presentations. So they still some time to recover and to ask some, some more question, but feel free to contact everybody, feel free to contact Mike and me because we are at your disposal in order to connect any, any one of you with each other, in order to connect solutions, in order to put our resources together. And uh, with, uh, let's say there are billions of euros in Smart Agri Hub for the grants, but this doesn't mean there is a lot of money. So this money will, will be addressed to up to 70 planned experiments uh, from this open call but uh, this is not a lot for the whole europe so let's try to maximize uh, let's try to maximize it for our southeast europe uh, region so thanks again Viorel, uh, i would like just to ask you if you did any uh, actions to present the Andre environment to the responsible in the Ministry of Agriculture because in my opinion they with these instruments and tools that uh, uh, Andre presented to us uh, special forecast can be uh, can be reached I, I did it for myself for the animal moving because I have data since 2004 and I send a lot of warnings to the different authorities that all the numbers, all the heads are decreasing. But of course, I am using normal programs and normal tools. But with my data and with his tools, I think we can put a lot of alarms to our governors because maybe in some, some years we will not any animal product to eat. I'll give you just an example. Uh, from 2004, we had two, almost 3 million cattle, and now we have 1.8 million. Yeah, uh, it it can uh, sound uh, like a good idea, uh, but uh, yeah, be uh, with, the, with the with the with the measures that uh, our paying agency is taken and to see what did happen. I mean, you should immediately go to the Ministry of Agriculture, in my opinion. Yes, Have my opinion is uh, with public authorities and the experience working with public authorities is first we have to alphabetize them in order to understand what the digital transformation can do for them. That's why, okay, we'll go to authorities, but I think the private sector, it's in, in the pole position in order to use such things and to show results much faster than a, a very rigid and uh, let's say sometime uh, miss uh, uh, people with misunderstandings from uh, from the public authorities. But they are okay, the all segments should go on. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are the policy makers. Yes, they are the policy makers, but um, uh, sometimes the policy makers are not uh, are not uh let's uh, uh let's say they, let's close the circle with uh, with antique history so uh, as mike started from marathon so <laughs> with uh, uh with the experiment runners from marathon so uh, i don't think that uh, the public sector will be the trojan horse in order to promote things like that uh they are much more concerned with their own interests speaking very bluntly that's why I think that the private sector, meaning us and meaning all of you, are in much better position in order to promote such outstanding solutions into experiments, into new solutions um, directly from, from the competence center at DIH to the farmer's community. I think it's a much faster and more efficient way. But 
don't worry we shall we shall go to authorities too Viorel, just one second. Uh, we, you, we have to because look, I will share with you only this page. You see, which is no, like this. I yep. have data since 2004: 150 million animals, two million holdings, two million, 2.3 million farmers, and I, I sent this paper to everybody. Nobody cares. I mean, please. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. We'll do it. We'll do it. Thank you, Abidu, for the comments. And uh, I would like to thank all the speakers uh, for being here today. And uh, I would like to thank the attendees for being this uh, webinar. And now, since our time is up, I would like also to uh, close this webinar. VRL, thank you so much for uh, organizing. And uh, Patrick, also, thank you very much for supporting us in organizing this webinar. And uh, I would like to close now uh, this session. Thank you all so much. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you, Daniel. Can you can you give me you, can you give me an email? Maybe we can meet this week. Bye bye. Uh, of course, but I would ask uh, Viorel because uh, he knows. Uh, can Viorel connect us? Because I don't know. I I mean, Absol my my email is in the presentation, so there's no pro no no ah, okay. no problem for you to pick it up. Or Viorel can connect us, right? No, I will I will send to all of you uh, all contact names and uh, in order to be to be able to do it directly. Yeah. Okay. Right. Perfect. Thank you, Viorel. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ciao. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.